Welcome to this episode of Last Epoch Explained. And today we're going to talk about status effects and ailments and damage in general and how Last Epoch kind of favors you and works in your favor at every possible turn. So let's get into it. Now the reason we're going to talk about status effects and ailments today and damage in general is because at almost every turn Last Epoch actually gives you the advantage as the player. Now almost every ailment in the game is incredibly effective. Let's take bleed for instance. For the first 10 to 15 levels or so while you're playing the game, one stack of bleed if you can apply it with one instance of a skill is generally going to be doing more damage than the skill itself. And if you continue to scale up the bleed damage and the amount of bleed stacks you can get, you can play the entire game just with ailments from start to finish while you're doing about 10 damage with your skills. Let's quickly go over some of the most important ailments and status effects in the game. The ones that you'll be interacting with the most anyway. And first of all, I just want to say if you're ever confused about anything in the game, you can press G, which is the default hotkey for the game guide. And in the game guide, You'll be able to find nearly everything you can come across in the entirety of the game. You can see here there are a lot of ailments and they all do something different. A lot of these ailments do damage over time and this is the main way you're going to be doing damage over time. Now there are some like chill that don't do any damage over time. However chill specifically at its max stack reduces action speed of a unit by 30%. So they'll be moving, attacking, casting 30% slower than they otherwise would have. And you can see here, a lot of effects have less effectiveness against players and bosses, but not in this case for bosses, which makes chill even better. But if you'd like to know more about each one of these most common ailments, you can come to the game guide, look at it really quickly. However, today we're just gonna focus on the shred mechanics and how every build is gonna end up using some form of debuff. There's a type of resistance shred debuff for every type of damage in the game, physical, cold, fire, lightning, necrotic, poison, and void. These resistance shred ailments reduce the target's resistance for that particular damage type. They subtract 5% against most enemies, but only 2% against bosses and players. They last four seconds by default and stack up to 10 times. So effectively what this means is if you get 10 stacks of any of the respective resistance shreds in the game, in enemy will take 50% more damage of that type. So 10 stacks of physical damage, they'll take 50% more physical damage, and that includes physical damage over time, such as bleed. Now we're going to talk about something that's a little bit different, armor shred. Now armor, if you recall, reduces damage taken from all hits but not damage over time. Armor is only 70% as effective against non-physical damage. So you can see here on my level 87 Rogue Marksman, I have 527 armor, gives me 18% damage reduction and 13% non-physical damage reduction. Now if we go back to the game guide and read the Armor Shred ailment, it reduces armor on the target, increasing how much damage it takes from hits. And by default, it subtracts a flat amount of 100 armor and lasts four seconds. It stacks infinitely. That's not stated here, but Armor Shred does stack infinitely. And there are a lot of ways to make Armor Shred more effective, which means if you get 20% Armor Shred effectiveness, it's gonna subtract 120 armor instead of 100. Armor Shred is extremely easy to apply, both for enemies and for ourselves in this case. So let's go back to the character screen really quickly. If I have five stacks, I lose 18% physical damage mitigation and 13% non-physical damage mitigation. Now, like I said, Armor Shred is an extremely easy debuff to stack, which means that I need to be extremely careful about entering Armor Shred areas while I'm doing monoliths and while I'm doing endgame echoes and quest echoes and things like that, because this can cause me to die extremely easily and without me even realizing it. However, the same goes for enemies. Now there is this handy dandy website that I'll have linked in the description below that shows us exactly what's going on here when we are talking about armor shred. Here we are currently tuned to area level one. So as soon as you step in the game, as soon as you start on your character, if you're able to apply one armor shred stack with zero effectiveness added, you're gonna be dealing 18% more physical damage and 13% more non-physical damage with hits to enemies. Generally, the armor amounts that enemies have are private and the dev team doesn't release them. So some enemies may have more armor than zero and some enemies may have more resistances than zero. However, for the purposes of the explanation, we're just gonna assume everything in the game has zero unless they're buffed up by an enemy modifier of some kind. So while we're just going through the campaign, if you're level one, 18% more damage with one stack. Now let's go to the next stack. 25% and 17%. Three stacks, 
30% and 21% more damage. And it continues on like that with diminishing returns. Now let's check out an end game area level. Let's go to level 75 because this is where you're gonna start really honing in on your build's uh, mechanics and how it interacts with the game. Now you'll see at one stack of armor shred, we're only getting almost 7% more physical damage. At this point in time, it becomes increasingly easy to stack up a lot of armor shred chance and armor shred effectiveness. At the same point that 10 stacks was at area level one, 38 stacks is at area level 75. You'd be surprised just how easy this is to actually accomplish. Now, something incredible about the ailment and the status effect system in Last Epoch is that you don't need to deal the corresponding or appropriate type of damage in order to apply a certain status effect or ailment. So for instance, on this bow, we have chance to chill on hit. As long as I hit anything with any skill at all whatsoever, I have a 32% chance to chill that hit specifically. Same thing with bleed chance. So let's say I somehow figured out how to cast fireball on a rogue with this bow equipped. I could cast fireballs that have a 17% chance to bleed on hit while also casting fireballs that have a 32% chance to chill on hit. And the game works like this because there are some effects that affect other damage types and archetypes while having the benefits contained to another damage archetype archetypes, relevant status effect or ailment. Shock, for instance, reduces lightning resist, of course. However, it increases the chance that the target will be stunned by 20% per stack. So that's an increased chance to be stunned of 200% at max stacks. So if you're playing a traditional Void Knight or you're playing any build that does one large hit every so often, you can very easily work shock into your build to increase your chances of stunning bosses and stunning large rare units, meaning shock specifically can be useful in a number of ways. And another way that Last Epoch really works in your favor is that if you have more than 100% chance to apply any status effect or ailment in the game, whatever percentage you have over 100%, you have a chance to apply two stacks of that ailment. And if you have over 200%, then every percent you have over 200%, a third stack of that ailment. So say you have 350% chance to apply bleed. Every single hit you do is going to apply three stacks of bleed and have a 50% chance of applying a fourth stack of bleed. And this works across the board, every single status effect and ailment in the game. And well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. This is the 10th and final episode of this series. If there's a list of commonly asked questions that, that I feel like I should answer, I might make a, an, an addendum or something like that. But in the meantime, no, this is, this is it. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you're gonna love Last Epoch as much as I love Last Epoch. Don't worry, this isn't the last you'll see from me. I'll still be making tons of content surrounding the game prior to its release and after its release far into the future. Yeah. Have a great day. I hope to see you in the next one. And thank you for tuning in and watching. I really appreciate it. Bye. Bye. Bye.